satisfied My longing Only in the satisfied My heart Only you can satisfy My longing Only you can satisfy My heart Oh, taste and see He is good
God, I searched all over trying to find somebody that was as good as you, Father. Searched all over. <laughs> searched all over. Yeah, man, I searched all over. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday Night Empowerment at Restoration Tabernacle. Uh, it is so good for all of you to be here with us. Uh, I hope that everybody had a great day. I'm excited uh, to be here with you guys and looking forward to what's about to happen in this place tonight. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to hear what God has to share with us. And again, I pray that you guys have had a, a great week thus far. I have had an amazing week. Uh, God has just been so good to me and uh, just continuing to shower me with favor and blessings. And because of that, I am excited. I want to give you guys a couple of seconds to come on in the room. And I want everybody that's on Facebook, YouTube, invite somebody, tell somebody Pastor Jason is on. Restoration Tabernacle is on the air and he's got something to share with you. Uh, tonight is going to be powerful. Uh, it is my desire to shift the way that we think, uh, to shift the way that we look at situations, what people deem as a crisis. I am learning how to look at it as an opportunity for growth. I'm going to say that again. Uh, what people look at as a crisis, I'm learning how to look at it as a uh, opportunity for growth. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get some people in here because this is going to help some people. Um, because uh, one thing I do know that anytime that you are in the midst of experiencing growth, you will always have to learn and you should know how to deal with conflict. And one thing that I am um, aware of is there are some things that you have to confront um, because you will never conquer certain things unless you confront it. But then there are certain things and certain people as you begin to grow in God that that conflict becomes unnecessary. So I, I, I want to I want to kind of deal with that tonight, learning how to deal with what's necessary conflict versus what's unnecessary conflict and how you can identify uh, the mission of conflict. Because again, some conflict is absolutely necessary. Uh, it's unavoidable. You can't get around it. You have to deal with it. You have to face that issue head on. You 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 just got to deal with it. But then there are other situations that have arisen in your life on your way to you becoming who God has called you to be that have become absolutely unnecessary. All right. So so let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um I want to uh, give honor to all of the leaders of the house and to all of our partners, all of our new members. The Lord bless you real good. Uh, it is a joy to be able to share with you tonight. Uh, so I want you guys to um, listen to this. Most battles that we fight, when we are unaware of the assignment of that battle, could lead us into fighting a battle that's really not important. Then 
there are battles. When you understand the assignment of that battle, it is an absolute. You must kill some things at the root, as my southern folk would say. You got to get it from the root, from the root. Us northerners, that's what we call it. We call it the root, and the southerners call it the root. But you got to get some things from that foundation if because if you don't it just grows and and becomes a bigger issue but let's dig into to, to conflict conflict if you're writing i need you guys to write this down conflict distracts you from your dreams and your goals and i also want to talk about contentious people people that are made up in their mind to just stay disagreeable we got to know how to deal with these kind of people. By the way, a contentious person often considers him or herself very honest and upfront. In fact, they usually take pride in telling you the way things really are. Subconsciously, they are often modeling someone in their life, either it's a mother, a father, uncle, or aunt, who accomplished their goals through, watch this, intimidating other people. Subconsciously, they admire this person and have decided to follow that pattern, failing to see the losses created through this kind of attitude. Powerful. Conflict or contentious people when it is unnecessary and they are unnecessary, distract you from your dreams and your goals. Have you ever met someone that um, is just used to doing things a certain way because that's how their mom did it or that's how their dad did it? You know, that's how they did it years ago in the family and they're just used to doing it this way. They're, 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 they're stuck on tradition. But if you're writing, please write this down. Tradition is frozen success. Let me say that to you guys again. Tradition is frozen success. Now, there are some traditions, again, like some people and some conflict that are absolutely necessary. But I'm talking about the stuff that you're doing year after year, month after month, because your mom did it, your dad did it, your grandmother did it, and you and everybody in your family know it ain't working no more. But we got to stay with it because it is a tradition. Some things, guys, that worked in the 50s and the 60s ain't working right now. We honor those that have accomplished what they accomplished. We thank God for, you know, the people that have gone before us. And let me just, let, let me address this. I don't want to hear nobody in this church praying to the ancestors. We honor our ancestors. We don't pray to our ancestors. We thank God for our ancestors, but our ancestors cannot take the place of God. Let me just drop that on y'all. But there are some people that really are, are stuck on doing things a certain way because that's how Mom did it. That's how grandma did it. But the truth of the matter, guys, if it ain't working, it's not working. And you have to be willing to admit that it's not working. And you also have to be willing to get rid of some things. Because again, some traditions are frozen success. It worked back then, but it's not working now. That's like, why would you use a typewriter when we have laptops? Why, why would you still uh, have uh, the, the, the two cans with the rope tied uh, connecting them talking as a telephone when we have cell phones, when we have smartphones? Why, why are you still trying to understand anything when we have Google? You can look up and learn anything you want to learn in 30 seconds in this day and time. But if you are stuck on how things used to be, you can't even find an encyclopedia anymore. Oh, I got to go find an encyclopedia. No, everything that you need is right in your hand in that smartphone. You have got to learn how to adjust and how to adapt to change. Because there are some things that we are doing that is absolutely unnecessary. 
I, I, I told my students the other day when I, when I did my webinar, I said, the reason why I'm able to spit out these books and, and songs is because I found something on my laptop called dictation. Now, dictation, as we know it growing up, was a lady in the courtroom sitting there typing everything that the judge, the lawyer, the, the defendant, and everybody in the courtroom said. But now we got it on the laptop. So if I want to write a book, I don't even have to know how to edit anymore. You don't even have to know how to have uh, the correct spelling of words, the correct grammar. The laptop will assist you. Dictation will type it for you. There's no excuse for you still holding on to how things used to be other than some people just don't want change. And it goes, it goes that way in relationships. It goes that way in ministry. It goes that way in finances. There are some people that just like fighting. They don't want to be peaceable. They don't want to come together like the scripture says, when there is conflict, let us come together and reason together. They don't want to do that. There are some people that don't want to save money. They like living paycheck to paycheck. They like begging. They like depending and leeching off of other people. Some people are just not ready for change. And when you identify those type of people and those type of scenarios, you know in your heart of hearts that there has to be a severing. There has to be a cutting away because if you stay connected to those kind of people, nine times out of 10, they're going to pull you down because their passion to stay stuck sometimes is greater than your passion to move forward. Uh, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Conflict distracts you from your dreams and your goal. Number two, you got to understand this. Nothing is more harmful to your success than a contentious person. Everybody knows this. When a person cannot get along with other people, you are, if you're in business, Profits will be lost. If it's in ministry, you'll lose membership. That person becomes costly. There, there's some people that I know, and I had to tell them, it costs too much to be your friend. It, it costs too much to be connected to you. It costs too much to be around you. I am at a high risk around certain people, and they are not worth me risking everything that God has for me. Because when you are around contentious people, your focus is broken. Other people become emotionally damaged and the overall goal becomes delayed. If it's in your family and people are contentious, you could have a goal of wanting to purchase a home. Contentious people will want to hold on to an argument that you had in 1958. Oh, I would do it, but remember what you did to me when we was out down south in Georgia and Uncle Pookie and Ray Ray and I was laughing at me because of what you said. What are you talking about? That has nothing to do with what we're trying to do now. Beware of people that don't know how to let stuff go. Ah, uh, let me help you real quick. Even if you and I are no longer connected, you and I need to learn how to let what's negative go. Because if not moving forward, I will take negative and unnecessary conflict into my future and you will do the same. That's why when people leave this church, I don't have nothing negative to say. I send them with the blessings of the Lord. I tell them, go and be great. You can always come back. You can always come visit because I don't want any negative baggage that I will bring into future relationships, into future business opportunities. Just because that opportunity did not work, I cannot let that become my mindset because there's something new on the horizon. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't you let what didn't work in your life poison your future. 
Don't you allow it to happen. Don't you allow that negative relationship to make you think everybody's against you, that everybody's going to hurt you, that nobody's going to honor you. Nobody's going to love you. The devil is a liar. You've got to learn from that negative experience, take it in, and now move forward. I dare somebody to type, let it go. Learn how to let it go. Learn how to move forward. Don't you dare stay angry. Don't you dare become contentious. Don't you dare become cantankerous. Don't you become disagreeable all the time. Don't you allow that spirit to jump on you because you will become the hindrance. And Minister Henderson talked about it Sunday. Don't you be the one, man, that stops this ministry from growing. Don't you be the one that stops your family from walking into financial prosperity prosperity because you don't know how to let stuff go. Don't you be that one. Don't you do it. You deserve better. You should live better. You deserve to be healthy. You deserve to be strong. Don't you be that person that holds on to negativity in the name of you not being a punk. In the name of Ain't nobody going to treat me like that. You, I'm sick and tired. You ain't going to walk alone. You ain't, I'm not that, that, that. Listen, you got to understand that when people do you wrong and people do, 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 do does wrong things to you, you have to learn how to forgive. You have to learn how to forget. You have to move forward. Don't be a fool. But you got to understand that that situation does not define you. Do not become the one that holds up the whole bus because we're on our way somewhere. Number three, contentious people, negative people destroy the momentum, the bonding, and synergy that agreement can create. Mm, Let me read that again. Contentious. And negative people destroy momentum. You know why a lot of us have been stuck in certain places? Because we had contentious people connected to us where we needed people that believe in the power of agreement. I, I'm talking about every relationship, every, I'm talking about marriage, friendship, ministry, business, all the above. A lot of us have become stale and stagnant because we are connected to people that have destroyed our momentum. Well, pastor, how do people destroy your momentum? By not believing in you, by not tapping into the power of agreement. By not understanding that it's not all about them, but it's about the big picture, the kingdom of God and the purpose and the assignment for your life and my life. I am not happy if my assignment is the only one getting executed. I have an obligation as a man of God to create opportunities of wealth, opportunities of progress for other people other than myself. That means that I can't stay in a negative state of mind no matter what I've been through. No matter who walked away, no matter who left me, no matter who thought I wasn't going to make it, I cannot allow that to become my state of mind because I'm obligated, because I'm blessed to create opportunities for other people to become just as successful as I am, if not more successful. But negative people don't think like that. Contentious people want to kill momentum. They want to hold grudges. They want to sit in the corner and do stupid things like not speak and, and hold grudges and let the devil use them. That is not kingdom behavior. I don't got nobody here. I don't got nobody here. That's not kingdom behavior. You can't even tell me you saved acting like that. No, 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 no. We need to mark you and we need to understand. And that is Bible. The Bible tells us in Romans 16 and 7, mark them. Put a mark on them that cause division and offenses. And then Paul tells them at the end of the verse, avoid them. Don't fool up with them. You busy chasing behind people. You trying to make people talk to you. Trying to make people believe in you. Later for them. 
I done got mad. I'm not supposed to get mad as a pastor. I done got angry. I done, I done got flustered. <laughs> Later for them. Because guess what? Let me serve notice on you. You may not have done everything right. You may have made some mistakes, but there's more greatness about you than there is negative. And you need people around you that's going to be honest with you and tell you, yes, you messed up. Yes, you jacked up. But I still believe in you. Come on. You still got potential to be who God called you to be. I'm not going to throw you away. Why do y'all think I'm so patient as a pastor? Because I can't get it out my mind. The evidence that God had against me and still anointed me, still chose me. I can't throw people away. But I can't allow you to become a weight either. Either you're going to let that garbage go so we can move forward or I'll see you later. I got to move. I can't stay stuck. And the servant, 2 Timothy, if you're writing down these scriptures, Romans 16 and 17, mark them which cause division and offenses. Avoid them. That's Romans 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 2 and 24 says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. Now, if you ain't a servant of the Lord, you got to be a servant of the other guy. I don't even like calling his name. I don't even want to give him that much credit. But people of God, must not strive. That means you can't keep grudges and be a servant of the Lord. Uh-oh, I know some of y'all going to get mad at me, but y'all know I don't care. You can't tell me you saved and got the Holy Ghost and holding grudges. The Bible says you must be gentle unto all men. To teach and patient. You know why? Because that's what God is to you. You have an obligation with your mean self to be gentle, to teach, and to have patience. And if you ain't got that, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. I know, I know, I know, I know. Pastor stepping on some toes. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. I'm trying to help somebody. Number four, let me keep going. I hope y'all sharing this video. I hope y'all sharing this video because this is going to free some of y'all tonight. Contentious people, number four, are in total opposition to the law of agreement. The greatest law of success on the earth. The law of agreement is the greatest law of success on earth. I got Bible for it. Somebody type, Pastor, give me some Bible. <laughs> Woo! I love this kind of teaching. I love this Bible. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. I got Bible for everything I'm telling y'all. Contentious people are in total opposition. That means nothing in their body, nothing in their mind wants to partner with anybody. They are not happy unless they are angry. They're not happy unless they are, 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 are holding grudges and causing division. They're just not happy. But less see what happens and what the bible says about this ecclesiastes 4 9 through 10 two two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he have no one to help him up. <laughs> Some of you, oh God, help me. 
I get very nervous when I see people that don't have no friends. And 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 you and you don't be crazy to my you know, it's just me and God. I don't need nobody else. That is a lie. That is a lie. You go against the purpose and the intent of creation when you say things like that. God, when he was creating things in the book of Genesis, when he looked at everything he made, y'all, read it. It's in the first chapter of Genesis. After everything God made, he looked at it and said, that's good. Until he got to Adam. When he got to Adam and he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth and blew into his nostrils and Adam became alive, he looked at Adam and said, whoa, this ain't good. It's not good for man to be alone. So all of you that are lying to yourself that I just rather be by myself. You are crazy. You're talking against the intent of God. God looked at man being alone and says, whoa, that ain't good. And he made him a help meet. God understood that it was impossible for you to live a healthy and a, a, a affirmative life by yourself. And all of you, that have lied to yourself and told yourself that you don't need no friends. You don't need nobody to love you. You don't, you know, if I got to die, I'm just going to be by myself. If I could do bad, no, no, no. You are talking against God when you talk like that because God looked at loneliness and said, that ain't good. So it's not good for you to be by yourself. You just been with the wrong people. It's not good for you to go through this life all by yourself without no friends because the scripture says it is good when you have two because their reward. In other words, two can get more done than one. Man, if you ever find someone that believes like you believe, if you ever find someone that thinks that it's your time to be blessed just as much as they think it's their time to be blessed. If you find someone that wants you to win as bad as they want themselves to win and y'all mess around and hook up, ooh, all your haters better look out. The enemy himself better look out because even God, there's one time in the scripture, uh, somebody say, give me some Bible. Give me some Bible. I dare you to type it. Give me some Bible. Genesis, the 11th chapter. We see this. The Bible says that the group of people called the Babylonians that are building a tower because they want access to God. They want us. They want to be able to talk to God face to face. They, they, They want to be high and lifted up and they want to build a tower that went all the way into heaven so that they can have access to be where God is. Very similar to what Lucifer wanted. He wanted to become equal with God. That's what got him kicked out of heaven because he did not understand the power of agreeing that God was the greatest. Oh man, oh God, it just hit me. When you don't understand the power of agreement, you will always remove yourself from your purpose position. Uh, do do y'all do y'all hear what I'm saying? Lucifer was created as an angel that when he opened up his wings, music came out, and it is believed by some theologians that he was the first praise and worship leader. When he when he when he opened his wings, music would come out, and the angels would worship God. But he got beside himself. He didn't want to be in agreement with God no more. He wanted to be greater than God. He wanted to dethrone God and be God. He wasn't happy where he was at. He wanted something that did not belong to him. So he got kicked out. So the Babylonians, great people, but they did something with a a negative intent attached to it. So God is sitting in heaven looking at The Babylonians build this tower and there's so much power in agreement that God looks at them and says, 
really is i'm telling y'all it's this bible is, is is powerful it's in the 11th chapter of the book of genesis god looks at the babylonians and says hold on if i don't get up off my throne and go down there and confuse their language so they're no longer able to understand and agree with each other anything that they do is going to be possible matter of fact let me quote it correct the bible says anything that they imagine to do it's not even what they're doing if they just come together and get a plan oh god oh man god my prayer is put people around me that want to plan that want to strategize that agree because anything we imagine is possible the problem is we have been sowing seed, partnering, getting married, dating, having children with people that don't agree with us. And then we wonder why our lives are stagnant. It's because you're trying to imagine something with people that want to kill your vision. You're trying to build something with somebody that don't even believe in what you're doing. Come on and preach to yourself, pastor. You, you, you're trying to build something with people that secretly hate your guts. And you're only as good to them as the last dollar you spent on them. Oh, I dare you to touch yourself and say, Lord, Help me to find people that agree with me. I don't got time to fight nobody. I don't got time to prove that you are God in my life, that you are the center of what we're doing. God, we don't have time. God, send people into our lives that agree. Because according to the book of Genesis, you said out your mouth, God, anything that these people imagined to do would become reality because of the power of agreement. So what God does, watch this y'all, he gets up off his throne and he goes down into the camp of the Babylonians and begins to make them all speak foreign languages to each other so they no longer can agree. Because if God didn't go down there and stop that, they would have accomplished one of the craziest feats in the world, building a tower. Watch this. This is before aerodynamics. This is before spaceships and space shuttles. This is this is this is how brilliant these people were. They would have been able to construct a tower that would have given them access to an area that was not granted to them by God. So what God had to do, he had to make people that were agreeable disagreeable in order to stop their assignment. Anytime people become disagreeable with you, your assignment is halted. It comes to a giant scratch because in order for it to work, we got to speak the same language. In order for it to work, in order for us to get a house, you got to agree. Listen, we ain't going to go shopping for the next year. We are not spending no unnecessary money because we got to go. But if that person you partnering with and trying to do business with, every time they get paid, they sneak into the mall or ordering something off of Amazon. There's more packages coming. Wait, wait, wait. I don't care if it's $5. That's $5 we could have put towards our down payment. You are not in agreement with me. That's why situations and people are stuck because they are partnered with people that love and enjoy being disagreeable. And I found out that a lot of people prefer being disagreeable because they're secretly afraid of moving forward. There are some people that don't want to leave the ghetto. They are. They don't want to give up that free light and gas from the projects. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes I miss it. I look at the light bills I got to pay here at the church and I'm like, Lord, I remember growing up, we could leave the AC and lights on all day long. 
come home and your apartment, you need a snorkel and a blanket. Because it'd be like a meat freezer in there. Be so cold, it'd be 100 degrees outside. We walk into them projects apartments, we be in like this. We would sleep under two or three comforters all year round. Summertime, wintertime, the heat in the projects is outrageous. The air conditioner, if you got one in the projects, is outrageous because it just doesn't shut off. It, it stays on all day. But don't let that be the reason why you don't become an owner. Because if it's in the plan of God for your life, he will give you the necessary provision for the vision for that house. Because I'm learning, guys, that there's some things you don't know you can do until you got to do it. My first apartment, my rent was $475. <laughs> and I got it from Huggins Realty. They were on Tompkins, uh, right next door, Tom, no, Troop and uh, Fulton, right next door to the McDonald's on Fulton. There used to be a little real estate shop right there called Huggins Realty. And Mr. Huggins gave me my first apartment, and I thought I was paying a million dollars a month, y'all. You couldn't tell me I wasn't grown. $475 a month, and I had a nice little studio apartment. It was nice. Right on 396 Hancock between Marcus Garvey and Troop. But guess what? I'm paying 25 now a month. With no problem. And back then, if you told me I had to pay $2,500 a month for anything, I would have thought you was crazy. Because my vision was too small back then to understand that it's all in me. It was always in me. I just never knew I could do it until I had to do it. So don't be afraid to find out what you can do when you have to do it. Let's move. Number four, the character, uh-oh, this is, this, this is a good one, y'all. The character of negative and contentious people only become revealed when you have to correct them. Good gagamu. If he is a scorner and a fool, he will hate you. If he is a wise person simply needing correction, he will love you. Reprove or correct not a scorner, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. That is in the book of Proverbs, the ninth chapter in the eighth verse. And all, in other words, people that don't want nothing, that want to stay stuck, when you got to rebuke them and correct them, they get angry and they will even hate you. Uh-oh. You know, sometimes I have to tell people, you know, because I'm a pretty laid back dude, you know. I'm a pretty understanding guy. But then some people become too comfortable and too familiar with me at times. And I have to say, hey, hold on. Remember who you're talking to. Hold on. I like to laugh and joke and all that. But there's just certain things and certain key words that if you say it to me, joking or not, it triggers me. So I have to remind people, listen, please don't, don't address me like that. Don't talk to me like that. And I'm not making no big deal. I'm just saying that for us to stay in a positive place, don't do that. That's like if anybody hits me here like that, you don't want to do that. If you ever want to see another side of Pastor Jason Hendrickson, walk by me and slap me in my head. I promise you, it's not going to be good. There's something that happens to me when somebody does that. And first of all, I'm 48. You ain't got no business smacking no grown 48-year-old man in the back of his head. But some people have tried it. And I'm talking about as recent as a year or two ago. And I had to really pray because I turned into like this other creature. 
I don't even I don't even want to say person, but I become so enraged because my father, when I was young, he used to pluck me in my head. He used to, and my father would, I mean, he was a hard plucker. He'd go bang, and he would I just this, <laughs> I'm like this all the time because I was always doing something. So my father would pluck me in my head. So it became a trigger for me. And I vowed that when I get older, nobody's gonna pluck me in my head. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna hit me back here. If they do, they're gonna have hell to pay. And one time, I never forget it. A lady from my old church, Glorious, and she is somebody that I honor and I revere. I mean, I respect this lady to the highest. We were at a banquet. And my wife was sitting next to me. And this lady better thank God that that woman was sitting next to me. She walks by us. And I mean, she didn't pluck me. She slapped me in the back of my head. And Monique knew. My husband's getting ready to turn this place upside down. And I'm sitting there shaking. And I get up to, to uh, and she grabbed me and said, Jason, don't. Jason, don't. Calm down. Calm down. And all I saw was red. I don't know what I was going to do to this lady, but it wasn't going to be good. I don't know what I was going to say, but it wasn't going to be good. I have to understand that there are certain things when people do to you that will bring out ugly sides of you. But if you are a wise person the bible says that when you simply need to be corrected that you will love the corrector but when you are a scorner or somebody that loves mess and loves disagreeing and loves arguing and screaming and turning up and just being all ratchet you will hate the person that's just trying to help you to be better there are some people that just will never change, y'all. And be very careful about people that can just cut you off like that because they're upset with you. Because you were trying to help them. People need to learn. We are not tissue paper. We are not disposable. You can't just wake up and be like, oh, okay. Really? Okay. Keep that same energy. And you go down the street with that because we are looking to connect with people that understand correction. Watch this. Even for pastor is necessary. Just because I'm a pastor or just because I'm the pastor of this church does not mean that I don't do stuff that I need to be corrected for. Having a title does not make you exempt from correction. There are times when I need somebody to be like, yo, pastor, you shouldn't have did that. And, you know, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. And still restore me after you correct me because I'm still God's man. That my mistake don't change who I am, but I can't act like I'm above mistakes because of who I am either. The Bible says it right here in Proverbs 9 and 8. Don't even correct contentious people because they're going to hate you for it. Rebuke a wise man, someone that understands that they're not perfect, that sometimes they say things. And, you know, sometimes people say things and hear the voice in their head of how they're saying it, but that's not how you give it off. And sometimes you need to be corrected because in your mind you were saying it like, you know, pastor, it really wasn't nice. You shouldn't have did that. But what you actually said was, who do you think you are? Shut your mouth, pastor. Da -da. Who, who are you talking to? Wait a minute. Wait one dog on minute. <laughs> who are you talking to? Because you heard it one way in your mind. But that's not how it came out. And my job is to tell you, watch how you talk to people. And anybody that gets upset when you tell them that is a fool.
That's what the Bible says. Pastor Jason didn't say it. They are a fool. And when you try to correct them, they'll stop speaking to you. They'll get upset with you. You don't really know me. Yes, I do. I heard what you said. I heard how you said it. And you were out of order and you need to be checked. Just that way, sometimes I'm out of order. Sometimes I need to be checked. But it needs to be done in love. Because watch this. Truth without mercy is murder. How many people have we killed with this thing between these two lips and this set of teeth? All because it was true, but you said it the wrong way. Some of us need to repent for murdering people, killing people's zeal, killing people, killing people's uh, uh, ability to even want to work in ministry, to try to start. We have killed it with our mouth. Some of us are murderers by word. You ain't never picked up a gun. You ain't never stabbed nobody. You ain't shot nobody. But your tongue is a deadly weapon. And when somebody that spots it, sees it, you get upset and you shut all the way down. And some folk will even become defensive to the point where they want to fight you because you're trying to correct them. But the Bible says they are scorners and they are fools. Cut them off. Leave it alone. Because a wise person says, you know what? Maybe I did say it like that because I know me. Cause let me let me be honest with you. I know Jason, and if y'all come to me like Pastor, you said something a little harsh. I know me. I know that I can be harsh at times. Why are you lying to yourself? I can understand you lying to me, but why are you acting like you don't know who you are? I know the front that we put on for people that we're all just so oh you know. But every last one of us got a nasty side to us. Every last one of us got an aggressive side to us. And sometimes we need somebody that ain't attached to the situation to pull your coattail and say, yo, bro, yo, yo, sis, you were out of line. Go back and get that right. But a foolish person will get mad and hate you for being that person. But a wise one will embrace you. Let me move forward. That was good, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to end it here on this one. Contentious and negative people love to discuss situations that do not involve them. Ooh. This is one of the biggest forms of evidence that you are contentious. They discuss the business of others knowing that their business ain't even straight. And I think we all been guilty of that. I'm not even gonna leave me out. I'm not, some of y'all gonna sit there act like, not me, Pastor, I'll never talk about nobody. Liar, 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 pants on fire. We all have done it. Every last one of us. But the Bible said, Proverbs 26 and 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. This Bible is something else. <laughs> in other words, folk that don't mind their business is like a person that goes take a dog by the ear. And if you know anything about dogs, you don't drag no dog by the ear. That dog will rip you to shreds. That is an invitation for you to get bit. All because you ain't minding your business. You are getting the smoke that you get in some of y'all because you got your mouth on situations and people that ain't got nothing to do with you. And there's no way that you can move forward and be successful with your mouth on people in situations that have nothing to do with you. 
I didn't say it. The Bible said it, y'all. Y'all get mad at pastor all you want to. I'm just trying to tell you what the word says. The word says, mind your business. And don't go grab no dog by the ear if you don't want to get bit. Go ahead, try it. Grab a dog by the ear. Especially a dog that don't know you. Now, if it's, if it's your dog and it's your pet and you got, it, it might not bite you. But a, a stray dog that don't know you, a dog that you ain't got nothing to do with, like that other situation, like that this people business that you're talking about, go ahead and grab a dog you don't know by the ear. Try to even get close to the ear of a dog. It will bite your hand off. That's what's happening to a lot of people. You are getting involved in situations that don't know you. You're trying to get involved with people that don't know you and wondering why you keep getting bit. Because you're sticking your nose in areas that it don't belong. This is how you identify contentious and unnecessary conflict in your life. And I pray that tonight that you guys was blessed by this. Um, because, again, anytime that you're on the journey to success, if you ever hit a roadblock, these are the things you need to check with the people that's connected to you. Why am I still in the same place in 2021 that I was in 2017? Mm, something to think about. Why am I still having the same arguments in 2021 that I was having in 2015? There needs to be a severance. It's not need, it's nothing else to talk about. What else is there to talk about? It's not working. Our way of doing things does not work. And the faster we realize that, the faster we can embrace the new things and the new people that God has ordained. Let me tell you something. There are people that have been born just to help you. I hope y'all believe that. <laughs> there were people that their assignment in this life was to come into your life and help you. But you can't receive the new if you got the old in a chokehold. You know, one of my favorite wrestlers was Ric Flair. And uh, one of his finishing moves was the sleeper hole. And he would whip you to the rope and then, bam, just catch you. And just, ah, 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 ah. And person would just go down and go down, go down, go down, go down. Until they fell asleep. Some of us got our mistakes and failures. And it got us in the sleeper hole. And we drifted. And we fallen. Further behind, falling, way behind schedule, getting deeper into debt because you're connected to people that don't want to have good credit, don't want to be owners. They're not even thinking on those wave lines, those wavelengths. Their mind is nowhere near where your mind is. They don't want God. They don't want to do ministry. They don't want to walk in the favor of God that's on this house. The favor of God that's on you. They don't want it. Stop trying to force favor on fools. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Stop trying to force favor on fools. I'm going to leave it there. Tonight was amazing. I hope that you guys got something out of it. I know this was a blessing to me. Um, and I really hope that you guys um, take notes and really go back and listen. Go back and watch this again. Because this kind of stuff will save you years of delay. Years of wasting time. Trust me. I'm talking to you from experience. The minute that I got okay in my mind and heart, that everybody's not going to go, I begin to experience astronomical, astronomical success. 
The favor of God is real. And I want that for you. I want that for you and your family. I want that for you and your business. I want that for you and your children in education. I want the favor of God that's on my life to be 10 times magnified on yours. You guys don't have a jealous pastor. You don't have a pastor that doesn't understand my assignment is to complete you, not to compete with you. I want your dreams to come true. I want to touch and agree with y'all. It, it, it's something that I want. I want you to be bigger than me. I want y'all to go further than I've gone in life. All of you. But I'm wise enough to know that some of you won't. Because you're not willing to let go of the things that we talked about tonight. And until you do that, you will remain in lowly bar. You will remain in Ichabod, in a place where God has put over the doorpost, the glory has departed. Why stay in Rephidim when God has called you to Rehoboth? <laughs> God Almighty, I love you, and I, I thank you, God, for this word tonight. I pray that you would allow us to make it applicable to our lives. I thank you, God, for this opportunity to share this word with all of our partners and our members. I pray, God, that you would help us to identify cantankerous and contentious and negative people in negative situations and unnecessary conflict in our lives. And teach us, God, to keep our mouths shut when we don't need to talk. To keep our nose out of other folks' business. God, not to worry about what this one and that one is doing, but to focus on glory. We can't make it on our own, God. We need your help tonight. Father, we ask you, please, kind Savior, do this for us. And we promise that we'll give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, I hope that you were blessed again. I had a tremendous time teaching this lesson tonight. I feel strengthened. I feel lifted in my spirit, and I pray that you guys do as well. This is what I need. I need to give you a couple of announcements. As we know, this Sunday is uh, fifth Sunday. Uh, we were going to get a bus to go to uh, headquarters. Um, but we didn't get the response that we wanted. So I'm not going to put that money out for the bus. So what we're going to do is everybody that has a car, meet us at 1338 Broadway. Meet us at the church Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. We're pulling out at 930. 9 a.m. We're leaving at 930. So if you want to jump in and... Uh, we're going to go out to eat afterwards. We're going to go fellowship as a church. And you don't need a vaccination card out in Long Island. So if that's one of the reasons why you're not coming or you not you don't want to go because you know we're going out to eat and you think you need a vaccination card, not in Long Island. That's only in the five boroughs. All right. So we want as many of you to come and we have to be dressed for church. All right. Pastor's putting on a suit Sunday. Woo. God help us. But I'm going to have on a suit Sunday. And uh, we want you to put on your things because that's the rules. Bishop's house is different than mine. All right. You don't have to do all that at, at our church, but at Bishop's church, you got to put on some church clothes. So we want to respect our bishop. We want to go and we want everybody. Uh, please, man, please, sir. If you're not going to go, enjoy the day with your family. Enjoy the day off fifth Sundays. There's no service. And this is going to be the only time that I pull you guys to even do this. And I really want my leaders. I need my leaders to show up and go with me. Even if you guys just want to come for service and leave afterwards, if you guys don't want to go out or whatever, that's fine. I understand that. But I need my leaders to show up at the service. All right. And let me give you guys the address. Let me give it to you now in the name of the Lord. Let me see. Um, power. The powerhouse church. All right, 734 Woodfield, 734 Woodfield Road in Lakeview, New York. Again, that is 734 Woodfield Road, Lakeview, New York, the Powerhouse Church. All right, meet us there. We're going to have a high time in the Lord. Um, <clears throat> 
and we just expect God to do great things. Uh, right now, I need everybody that can and will to do me a favor. Our giving information is flashing across the screen. I need you guys that can and will. I need everybody to sow $30. I'm going to be the first one. Let me do it right now. I'm going to sow my $30 right now. If this word blessed you, so, so, so into this word, I believe that God is doing some amazing things in our lives. And it's because we are sowers. I'm sowing mines. My $30. I need as many of you that can sow $30. And watch this. If you do not come, <clears throat> even if you do come um, to Long Island, we are still doing our obligations for Sunday at uh, 1030. 10:30. Let me wait for this uh, ambulance to go by. You know, it's best eyes. Always something happening, y'all. Always. Um, at 10:30, we will all give our tithes and offering simultaneously. All right. At 10:30, every member of Restoration, we need you to sow your tithes, or you can do it now. You can do your tithes and offering for Sunday now, because some of you have it now. Do it now. Do it now because we still have to take care of our obligations at home. But we are going to Long Island to sow a seed. We're going to do that in the name of the Lord. But I need you guys to make sure we take care of home first. All right. Do that for pastor. And I believe the Lord's going to bless you. If you don't have the $30, I need all of you that can sow $20. need you to sow $20 tonight. Sow that into this ministry right now in the name of the Lord. Our cash app in our Zelle is flashing across the bottom of the screen. And uh, <clears throat> come January, uh, we go, we, we, we're going to launch our new website, and we also are going to launch in January text to give. Everything is already set up, and our church app, we're launching all of that new stuff in January. So get ready. We're making some changes, um, and God's going to be glorified. All right, guys, so do that. If you don't have 10, you got five, four, three, two, one, whatever you have, sow it now in the name of the Lord. And I know that God's going to bless you. And if you were not in church Sunday and you want to sow your tithes from this past Sunday, you can do so now in the name of the Lord as well. All right, guys, I love you. <coughs> I thank God for you. Got a little juice here. Let me get a little juice real quick, y'all. Strawberry lemonade from Wendy's is amazing. But uh, we want you to make sure that you are in place and in position. And if you're not going Sunday, I'll see everybody in the tabernacle the first Sunday in November. All right. I pray that you guys enjoy the rest of your night. Please continue to pray for me and know that I'm praying for you. I love you guys. And it's an honor to serve as your pastor. Good night. I pray for every hour of sleep. That God gives us two hours of strength to get up and do it again tomorrow. In Jesus' name, I love you guys.